Partnership Challenger Manual. My name is Declan Cahill and I'm delighted to be Master of Ceremonies at this morning's event. We live in a different world today, unfortunately. Normally this event would have been in a meeting room where we would meet and engage and talk to each other and be able to present our various uh, uh, speakers. Uh, but, but due to the restrictions, we have to say physically apart from each other, but that's not going to stop us. So we have a lovely lineup of speakers today. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to the first speaker, who is Nessa Vaughan, the chairperson of Northside Partnership, who will speak to you about the background to Challenger. Nessa. Good morning, Declan. Thanks very much, Declan. Great to see you again as well. Um, and good morning, all my fellow attendees. Um, I'll just say a couple of, I'll be very brief, um, and I'll just say a few words also just about the partnership itself for those who mightn't be that familiar with it. Briefly, the partnership is one of the, uh, a number of local development companies uh, that were set up uh, in 1991 by government under a programme called the Programme for Economic and Social Progress, PESP. And the idea there was to address by mobilising statutory organisations, community organisations, um, and other various interested parties, trade unions, employers, etc., to address the, the, the stubborn problem of long-term unemployment. Um, the state took the view that notwithstanding uh, significant investment in the areas that were experiencing high levels of unemployment, they weren't making any serious dents. So hence, partnerships were formed. Northside Partnership was one of the first ones. And over the time, it has evolved and asked to take on other responsibilities, uh, mainly around areas of addressing social exclusion. So, for example, at the moment, the partnership um, is very involved in SICAP, the Social Inclusion uh, Community Activation Programme, TUS, Local Employment Services, Job Clubs. We've also developed initiatives of our own, like Challenger this morning, uh, Preparing for Life, and a range of uh, education support right across a uh, person's really life. Uh, we have a board that's also representative um, of the various um, interest, interests um, and it also uh, has the community at heart. And I just want to quote very briefly from our strategic plan 2015 to 20, uh, 2019 to 2023, um, just our vision, because I think it's relevant to what we're do what we're addressing this morning and what we're celebrating this morning. Um, the vision states, and I'll quote and I'm going to read it because in case I stumbled over it and didn't, rem uh, and didn't remember it, is um, to contribute to the building of a more equitable society in which individuals have opportunities to express their skills, talents and abilities through social, cultural and economic life. And I think underpinning our strategy besides the various measures, which I won't go into at the moment, is um, it's this concept of uh, advantage thinking. And it's one of our practice principles. And essentially, as I understand it, it's really looking at people's, it's uh, acknowledging and, and supporting people's talents, skills, strengths, and recognizing that they're unique. So everyone has something to contribute in a unique way. And it's about nurturing that talent to, so, to enable citizens of our Republic to contribute to society, be it economic, cultural, social, sporting, whatever part of, of, of a community life or civic life that might take. And that's where Challenger comes in. Challenger was, uh, we've been involved in Challenger since 85, would you believe it? And there's been numbers of reviews and tweaks to the programme over the years. But it came really from um, an initiative developed by two homeschool liaison teachers in Priorswood and um, Darndale, uh, Donald Boyle and Noel Kelly, late of our own parish, now of Tusla, I think. Um, and it really, it looked at, you know, there was data there, and we won't go through detailed figures, but data showed that people in, in a number of students in parts of Dublin 5, Dublin 17, were not participating to the same level as their peers from other areas in third level education. And we all recognise, and the teachers, parents, and the parents should recognise, that they are students and people in, in, who live in those areas are as talented, are as gifted as people from anywhere else. I won't name the other places, but yeah, I think you, you, you might have a, an idea where they are, where the participation rates of 90 plus percent. So we said, what, do, what must we do or what shall we do to help people to um, participate and, and make that transition to third level? So we, 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 we uh, work, started working with students who we, who we thought had the potential and interest 
to, to progress to third level. Started working with them from the end of fifth class, sixth class, to help them make that transition initially, which it can be a ma major uh, hurdle to jump from primary to second level. Then support them to, uh, to complete their um, junior certificate. And then after junior certificate, remain in school up to uh, complete their leaving cert and then to um, graduate, hopefully to third level. And that's what really we have been doing, working with students and their parents and other partners. And DCU, we saw on the video there, are, is a key partner in this, in this journey. I also just want to acknowledge also the funding that we, we received from the Department of Rural and Community Development. I'm delighted the Minister, uh, the minister uh, can, can, uh, Joe O'Brien is with us again today. Um, and the, the Department of Education and Skills, because uh, we need we, we need those resources to help us achieve what we are achieving. So the, the challenge, are, we stayed with it and tweaked it because it is successful. It is successful in helping students with their families and with the wonderful teachers in our community um, complete second level and go on to third level, those who, who wish to go on to third level. Um, and we, we, we also wanted, in the, in the spirit of sharing, to say, OK, let's document what it is we do, that if this were to be rolled out, what, way should, what, what, are, what, what shape should that be? What's the learning? How can this be applied more widely, both if we were to, uh, to roll it out even in our own area, and we would like to, we have the resources, but also to other areas that have similar challenges to ourselves. Because in the spirit of community development, we're all about sharing. We're not about hiding stuff and just keeping it or monopolizing stuff. So this today is a, is a watershed in launching this uh, Challenger manual um, and uh, other speakers will speak about it. But we, in conclusion, I, I want to say is it's a, it's a landmark day for us. It's a day of celebration. It's a day to, to acknowledge the students in our area who have overcome often a lot of hurdles, but who, have, who are uniquely talent, talented. The wonderful parents who support them all the way and the wonderful teachers in our community. So I want to thank uh, everyone who's attending today. I look forward to hearing a bit more about it, but the Northside Partnership will continue to invest in this because we now know from numerous studies that education actually is the single most effective measure to end poverty and to enable people to participate uh, as a citizen on an equal level. As, uh, with, all, with all our fellow citizens. It used to be said was, uh, employment was the root out of poverty. We now know actually education is, more, is the more effective way. So we'll continue to invest, we'll continue to learn, and we'll continue to work with DCU, with the parents, and with the wonderful students. So thank you very much, Chair, for, for allowing me to speak for those few minutes. Thank you very much, Alison. What a wonderful yeah. and uh, succinct background to the Challenger programme. Thank you, Alison. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, the Minister Joe O'Brien, Minister for Safe Community, Community Development and Charities, who's going to formally launch the Challenger Manual. Minister, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Sorry, I just had to make sure I was unmuted there. Um, you know, Nesson covered a lot there, and I just want to pick out a couple of his words to say it, because we can't say it enough. Um, that, you know, everyone has value, everyone has talent, and, um, you know, we can't reiterate that enough from, from day one in the education system and beforehand all the way through it. So I just, I just want to pick that point out from Nesson's uh, really uh, succinct uh, speech there, just, just to reiterate it. Um, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really delighted to do this, and I, I genuinely mean that, and I'll explain why in, in a minute. But, but first, before I forget, I do want to acknowledge some of the people um, who are involved, particularly in, in, in today's um, celebration and the reason why we're here today. Uh, and I want to name Paul Hayes and Jeanette Burns, in particular, the coordinators of the project. And thanks to Neve McTiernan, who I, I had a chat with yesterday. Um, about Challenger. I've been reading a little bit about it over the weekend, but I wanted to have a, a, a chat about it as well. So I'm, I have to say, I'm only learning about it. Um, but when uh, Paul Rogers mentioned it to me initially, and thanks to Paul Rogers as well, it did pique an interest of mine um, because, well, the first job that, that I got basically uh, after college w was working with early school leavers. And, you know, to this day, even in the job that I'm in now, it's probably the, the area that I learned most uh, and carry with me to this day. Um, because I suppose what struck me 
um, working with early school leavers 20 years ago now was the uh, the sense of how lucky I was and a sense of how just unlucky other people are. Uh, and literally by chance, the circumstances we're born into kind of defines us to a, a large degree. But what really, I suppose, is exciting about the Challenger program is that, you know, that clearly doesn't have to be the case. And um, I, I, I suppose we, we can't be naive enough to think that our education system, good and all as it is, um, can possibly fit everyone and can possibly facilitate full growth and development uh, in everyone. Uh, it just doesn't work for everyone. And that's, that's, uh, that's not certainly not the young people's fault. Um, what I particularly like from what I've learned so far about the Challenger program is kind of two particular aspects. And one of which I've mentioned already is the emphasis that it pay, places on a person's value. Uh, and what you can do already. And um, it seems to me that the program is kind of getting the message across to young people that, you know, you have all you need within you already. Uh, and this program is a different way of bringing that out. And, you know, that's, you know, that's, that, that, that's something that would be great to have across the system. Uh, and I thank those people back in 1995, I forget their names now, and let's mention them for actually starting this, and thanks to everyone who's worked on the scheme, uh, the program since then. Um, I suppose the other thing that struck me about the real um, importance of the Challenger program is that it's a constant through all these really difficult periods, uh, not just in a young person's life, in anyone's life. If I look back in my life and I look at the most difficult periods, it's, it's the period going from primary to secondary. It's then stressor points of state exams and then it's that big leap into 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 third level as well and i think that's to me that seems to be a huge part of the value of the challenger program that is a constant through all the really difficult periods as well and and that that seems to be key for me um and like what i'd say to any young people uh watching this or who might look at it later on you know if you can get through these years of your life uh particularly in the midst of a pandemic, you're, you're literally going to be, you know, unstoppable at the other end of it. It is probably the most challenging part of your life, uh, for sure. Um, I'm not going to speak for too much longer. I, I, I am interested in hearing a little bit more. I won't be able to stay for all of the events, but I'm looking forward to hearing from Colin Faulkner. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from uh, Karina as well in terms of her experience of the programme. Um, I am delighted that my department supports this, uh, along with the Department of Education. Um, you, one of the first things that I did actually w when I got into this post was to write to Simon Harris and ask him for a meeting because I see huge um, overlap, I suppose, between my department and his in terms of the broader social inclusion agenda. And I think he recognises that as well. Uh, Okay, I think we've lost the link to the minister. Identifying her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just cut out there for a second. Um, but I suppose I'm keen to spread the message about this uh, uh, and to encourage other organisations to do it as well. Um, um, and I suppose the big... Can you read? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I'll make it quick before I cut out again. Um, look, uh, the, big, the big celebration today, I suppose, is the fact that we now have the manual and we now have the means to show other communities, show other organisations how this is done. Uh, and I'd really just encourage anyone listening today to spread the word about it. Uh, I'll certainly do so. I'm going to do a bit of social media later on uh, to spread the word about this uh, fantastic achievement. So, look, before I get cut off again, Thank you to everyone who's, who's made this a reality and, and well done to everyone who's gone through the program. And um, uh, internet connection uh, hopefully will stay so that I can, I can hear some of the further inputs from now on. So well done everyone and, and, and thank you again for inviting me to speak at this event. Thank you very, very much, Minister. Uh, three things I pick up the board. It's marvellous to see. It's marvellous to see that level of support for this program from government. Uh, I think you made a very important point about the constant 
feature in young people's lives through this programme. I think that was very interesting. And I've also the question that you met the Minister Harris in terms of social inclusion. Now, I know um, ministers at the moment are extremely busy and we really appreciate your time today, Minister, because everybody seems to be up the walls trying to deal with the situation at the moment. So thank you very much for formally launching the programme. The partnership is very appreciative of your time and your support and indeed your continued support in this regard. And of course, what it does highlight, as I mentioned in my earlier remarks, is it's a different world. Uh, normally in a meeting room, we would unlikely to have the sort of um, technical issues with internets and so on, but we, we are where we are, as the famous politician said, so we're going to continue. So our next speaker now is going to talk about the Challenger programme itself, and that's Jeanette Burns. So Jeanette, over to you. Good morning, everybody. Um, my role as a coordinator is to successfully deliver on the programme's aims and objectives, to maintain young people in education, thereby enabling them to achieve their full potential to create an alternative culture around education in the community and by doing so to make the third level education both attainable and achievable. To work in, in partnership with the parents in achieving these objectives with students, schools and, and agencies to increase the number of young people from the Dublin Seminary area to progress to third level. I'm going to start with a quote and the quote is education is the passport to the future for tomorrow. Tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Malcolm X. Um, I'll outline, I'll discuss that quote now at, at the very end when I'm linking the graduates. So the outline of the program, my role is I registered the Challenger students over 250 in September. I, I do a follow-up recruitment for students who may drop out. I do all the recording of, of why they may, may drop out. Not many, but they do. Um, I look after the Challenger brochure, designing the brochure, evaluating the program, looking at what went well during the year, what, what we can improve on. I link in with the homeschool liaisons on our steering committee and I get advice from them what, what programs maybe for future are they delivering for students away from the academic, looking at soft skills. I'm always tapping in to the teachers who have the students on the ground in schools and how, how education is always evolving and we're always making changes to keep it fresh for the students, keep them interested and keep that drive going. Um, I also promote the Challenger programme for our fifth, fifth class students in primary school in around uh, June and then in the following September I go back into the schools and they're in sixth class and I promote the programme, I give them the brochure, I um, tell them all the benefits of being on the programme and what I'm doing there is I'm sowing the seed for them to go home to mom and dad or nanny and tell them about this great programme and why they should get involved in it. And if the student wants to be in it with the parents a little bit, parents seem to be swayed by their children and they buy into it and come onto the programme. I also showed the Challenger promotional video um, and the students love that. So you get to see everything that's done throughout the year. And when you're in sixth class, Challenger is very exciting. There's a lot of practical workshops. It's about bonding and the Challenger students know that it's not like school. It's not in a school setting to get to make new friends. It's a new environment. There's the financial end of the programme that I, I tell them about as well, which is very important in Dublin 17, Dublin 5, that this is not going to cost money, that we're here to support them and help them in primary, into secondary, and to go on to third level college. Then we follow up with our interviews for the six class students, and then 40 students come on at, in January. That's their Christmas box off Santa Claus. They've got a place on the Challenger programme, which they love. Um, I do a lot of supervision, so I supervise a 10 week grinds program for our leaving search students in seven core subjects and also our junior search for eight weeks. Um, now, obviously, this year uh, they're going to have to be done online, but I'll still, still have to be online to do the supervision. Um, but uh, it's very important that these workshops continue and we're just learning in a different format and that the students um, get what they need out of the program, especially the leaving search students. Um, our steering committee um, is very important on the Challenger programme. They, I, I, we meet with them four times a year. So every quarter, every quarter of the year, I report back to them on that quarter of the workshops and feedback all the attendance sheets, uh, any difficulties on the programme, what might have worked well, what didn't work well. Um, they bounce back with me and give me suggestions on, on how we can improve things. 
So it's always, we're always evaluating throughout the year. It's not, it's set in stone in September. We keep on working together as a team. Um, fine, I look after all the finance of the program. So all the payments and the project files, that's another big area of the program that I look after. Um, one of the important parts is the STEPS program and six class for the parents. 40 parents come onto the program in January and complete our STEPS program, which is run by Adrian Hayes. Fantastic program. Student parents love it. And the link between the parents and the students, between the, the two, Mammy goes and does her course, or Daddy, and the daughter or the son goes and does their reading club in Kulak Library. Um, they work parallel. So the parent is supporting the student, the student's parent, student supporting the parent. Um, and that balance is what's driving the Challenger program forward from six class, six class. Um, I'll just talk quickly about some of the outcomes of the Challenger program. Um, so we, we started the program last September and in the normal format, it stopped in March. So we had to get our thinking caps on, but up to that point, some of our workshops had been completed. So we had the STEPS program, 29 graduated out of 40, but some of the parents have already done the STEPS course because they'll have two or three children on Challenger. So 29 was an excellent number to complete the STEPS program. And we ran that over 10 weeks. We did STEPS for, for four years and 16 students completed that course. Program for life for four years and 16 completed that, that course. Public speaking did a first exam. Uh, it was a three-way exam, a, a, a riddle, written, oral, and a presentation. And they, they did 16 um, graduating that. So in March, when the Challenger program came to a halt uh, in the normal format, we had to come up with more creative ways of looking after our Leaving Cert students that would have been completing the leave, doing the Leaving Cert in June. So we came up with Jumper Grade Grinds. Well, it was Paul Hayes. That was his, his idea. And um, over 25 students tapped into for four weeks before everything went into the kind of the lockdown. Uh, jumper Grade Grinds and various subjects. Now, these grinds are run through, I think, University of Limerick. Excellent um, tutors, great feedback for the students. I got great feedback that they really loved those grants, they're quite expensive, but we still felt that we had to put them on with the students uh, because we had to do everything to support our six years, uh, unfortunately, in the year that they, they had in the <laughs> secondary school. Um, so Conversation Irish and St. Pat's for our uh, first years went ahead and DCU St. Pat's and uh, they had a great time up there for six weeks learning the Irish in a fun way. Um, just in terms of the Leaving Cert results, um, in third level, 12 students this year have gone on to third level. PLC, 16, which is post leaving cert. Uh, apprenticeships, six. Employment, four. And deferred, four. If I go back, I'm nearly two, year, two decades running this program. And I remember my first evaluation of Challenger in 2002. There was only, it was the opposite way around. There was more trades and very low number going to third level. It's gone full circle. So that percentage from 20% of Dublin 70 and Dublin 5 heading to college is going to keep rising as long as this program keeps striving and the support of the schools, the committees, um, the Northside Partnership and the parents. And we all do our, play our part. This program we will just thrive and it'll thrive in other areas. Two of my students this year, this is one of my favourite times of the year when I'm evaluating the challenge of students. I see them as these little six class students coming in six class. And then when I see them in six year, young men, young women, and I'm ringing them up for the results and I love getting the results. You know, it's not, it's, for me, it's not all just about the points because it's, it's about the overall person and what challenge it gives them for seven years. A lot of it is intangible, you can't, you can't measure it, but I see the growth in, in, in the students. So our highest points were, were two students, one got 509, that was a male student and he's gone to DCU for engineering and a female student got 507, and has gone to, to study in Marino Institute of Education for primary school teaching. Now, I'd, I mean, I mean, overall, I think we were close to from 300 up in the Leaving Cert this year for over 25 students out of 40. So the, the overall um, was, was excellent. I feel that if I pick one of my time in the Challenger program, if I pick one of my success stories is a family of four students in one family who I, may, I can name the area, it was OLI Darndale, who, who came onto the Challenger program nearly all at the same time. It, um, two sisters, two brothers. Um, the two girls went on to be primary school teachers, and one is currently teaching in OLI, and the other two, the lads, became engineers. 
<coughs> for me, if I was to pick out of, of four in a family, that always stays in my mind. That's one of the success stories on the Challenger program. Um, but there's just, 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 just there's loads of success stories, and they're in the, the in the Challenger resource manual. That quote I gave you is, is I feel sums up the Challenger program. It, it, it's that if, if education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for today. When children come into Challenger in sixth class, they're preparing for third level because we're mentioning them in sixth class. Yeah. They're preparing to give seven seven years of commitment to the Challenger program to get to that third level. So they're buying into, into the program and they're giving their time and with the support of everybody. And, you know, my job sometimes can be hard on the ground, but the students know I'm at the end of the phone there to support them in many ways besides the education side. Um, and I just say it's just great to share that it's still running out there since 1985 to 2020 and long may it last. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Uh, th 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 three things that jump out to me in your presentation. One is that phrase, passport to the future. Oh, wonderful, isn't it? The yeah. second thing you said about sowing the seeds, that links into it. And the last thing I'll say to you is that the passion that you've exhibited and your team exhibits is the reason why this programme has been successful. So thank you for, for the work you've done. Okay. Um, thank you, Jeanette. So we're going to move on now to... Um, uh, Colin Falconer, who's going to talk about the manual itself. So, Colin, over to you. Great, thanks very much. Um, can you all see my slides? No. Not, not yet. Okay, there we go. Now we are. Great. Um, so, I get to work with quite a few different inspiring organisations, but I have to say I was really excited to get a chance to work on the Challenger Manual with Northside Partnership. It is, as many of you will know, a real life-changing programme for both the young people and the families who, who um, benefit from it. And I really appreciated and enjoyed the time I got to spend with very passionate Jeanette and, and the wise um, Paul in the, in the Northside Partnership team to learn about Challenger and to try and capture some of the magic in the manual, which I hope you'll find um, today. So I want to talk a little bit about starting with why is Challenger called Challenger? I think that it's an interesting and useful title for us because as a society, we really do need to challenge ourselves, all of us, to do better with and for young people, particularly those who are traditionally not so well served through the education system. And coming today, right in the middle of the pandemic, that challenge is even more profound because really we need to ask ourselves, are we just going to focus on problems in a way that creates more problems or are we up for the different challenge to try to create a world which meets everyone's needs and potential? And I think that's the sort of challenge which the Challenger program is trying to push to get us to think more about people's potential and talents and how we can work with people through a more growth mindset to help them achieve their future. That's the sort of foundations of the Challenger vision. And it does actually have a name, which I, I know there's already been mentioned this morning, in advantage thinking, something which I helped develop um, back in 2013. And advantage thinking is about this shift in our approach from just thinking about well, how do we help people cope with problems, which only leads to more problems in the end, towards something more inspirational. How can we equip people to thrive in the future? What do we need to invest in to do that? So advantage thinking really pushes us away from stopping disadvantaging people through a more negative deficit mindset towards what are the things that we can do to advantage people's talents and potential. And it has specifically seven particular attributes which are captured in the Challenger Manual. And if you know Northside Partnership Strategic Plan are clearly referenced in that plan too, about the seven tests of being of advantage thinking, which range from how we talk about people using more positive aspirational language, it doesn't deficit, sort of stereotype people, towards how we understand people's potential talents and skills and aspirations for the future, how we can work with and invest in, in people in more positive ways, using the sorts of inspirational positive approaches that the Challenger program promotes, and how we really believe in people and have high aspiration for what they can achieve, which I think you can clearly hear from Jeanette's passion for her belief in, in young people's future. And how we can also involve both young people and their families as being part of the solution for, for, for these particular issues. 
And lastly, what are we doing to challenge not just ourselves, not just young people, not just their families, not just their communities, but also our wider society to actually work with young people and believe in them in a different way. That's all part of the advantage thinking challenge, which really resonates through the Challenger programme. And I think it's very interesting and exciting today to realise whilst the Challenger programme obviously has a unique focus on Dublin and particular areas of Dublin where you want to reach young people who can most benefit from it. But in terms of resonating and connecting with advantage thinking, Northside Partnership is also sort of sending an inspiration rocket around the world in, in, in many ways, because it's a global vision. The language of advantage thinking is something that would resonate and be understood all the way from the United States to the United Kingdom into mainland Europe and all the way down under to Australia. You're talking in a language which other countries would understand and I think there's so much practice and learning in China which would be welcome outside of Dublin. So that's good to see today. So what's in the actual manual then? Well, why a manual anyway? Why should you try to manualize the magic which you can hear in people like Jeanette and, and the other Northside Partnership team? What is the benefit of having a manual? There's a few important attributes to what we were trying to achieve with the manual. One was simply when, when you create a brilliant program and have such magic in it, it would be almost criminal not to actually capture what's working in the program to help sustain it in the future. Because, of course, we'd like to think that Challenge will be around for much longer time to come and involve different people. We can't just clone Jeanette and send her around the world, but we can try to capture what works in a way that others can learn from. So that's a very important aspect of the manual. We're also, and this is very much driven from the inspirational values of Northside Partnership, which want to pass the challenge on to others, other communities, other organisations. So the Challenger Manual is about trying to capture the programme in a way that other people can be inspired by the challenge and pick up the manual and learn from it and adapt it and express it in their, in their own communities. And lastly, throughout that process, which is very clear from Jeanette and Paul, wanting to make sure that anyone who works in Challenger stays true to the ethos from which where the programmes come in terms of its belief in young people and working in a particular way with their, with their community. So we try to write the manual in such a way that it can pass that challenge on, but in a way that always stays true to, to the original ethos. So what's inside the manual? So the manual is quite a rich resource. It's not like a, a paint by numbers approach to capturing the Challenger programme. It's done it in a much more interactive way. So if I can talk you through some of the elements in, in the manual. Firstly, it's about making sure that when you open the manual, you can get inspired by some of those star stories from the Challenger programme that Jeanette's raised today to make sure you start by being inspired and you feel that connection to where challenges come from. And throughout each of these sections, it tends to be there's a reflective question for the reader to make sure that you are interacting and thinking about what does this mean for you? What inspires you? What's your action that you can do from what you're seeing in the manual? We then go and explore some of the key principles in the Challenger programme, which resonate from what's the key principles of Northside Partnership and their vision and values, which includes, of course, section three, the big onus on advantage thinking, and really trying to promote how the Challenger programme captures and expresses some of those powerful seven tests of advantage thinking, particularly around its belief and the way it invests in, in young people and challenges themselves and others and to work in this way. Then, of course, so this is kind of laying the foundations for an organisation to really understand the ethos of the Challenger programme. So by the time we get to the programme, we can better appreciate the different phases of Challenger. Northside Partnership's been on a journey with the Challenger programme, from how it's been set up to how it's then been scaled to increase its reach, to how it's been able to then work on its sustainment. So that very, those at different phases of the programme are clearly mapped out for someone through, through the manual. And it also encourages in section five, an organization to really think about if you're gonna do the Challenger program, how does it connect with other aspects or other types of provision, other areas in your organization to make sure that it can be fully embedded as it is in Northside Partnership. So that's kind of like the first half of the manual is kind of laying those foundations. Then we get in a really exciting sections, beginning with a health check readiness which actually draws from 20 different areas of the programme to help 
an organization really assess how ready is it to put in place the challenger program and to begin to identify those areas that you might need to develop over your time scale of, of, of running with the challenger program. So it really lays in strong foundations to make sure that challenger will be a success. That also involves then looking at the different resource considerations in terms of the types of staff you need, the types of funding you need, of course, and the types of communications to actually promote Challenger to the different audiences that it needs to reach. And then we, we kind of finished the manual with some really helpful tools, which will make sure that the manual doesn't just get put away on the shelf once you've got inspired, but it can stay with you as an organization throughout the time you're running the Challenger program. So it includes the best 40 best practice tips that we've managed to glean from learning how Jeanette and Paul and the team work, that we can share those tips with, with organizations running manager. And in section nine, we've managed to nail down 21 potential scenarios that you might experience in the challenger program and been able to run through those as troubleshooting scenarios that you can then um, think about how you would respond to those and what kind of answers can you glean from Northside partnerships practice. And only in section 10 do we get to the more paint by numbers bit, but we've included all the different example materials and resources from Northside Partnerships expression of the Challenger program, which of course you can pick up and, and use to run from if you're trying to develop your own Challenger program. So you can see that it's a rich um, resource manual. It's not just a, 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 a very basic practice guide. It has lots, much more experiential and is really trying to engage you as a reader to think about how you can develop the best challenger program possible. So I like to think about the, the challenger manual as like a special Christmas present you can find under the tree. <laughs> We're approaching up to Christmas. It's a good analogy to use. And I think there are three types of present we often find at Christmas. There's that one sort of present that you feel almost embarrassed to have received and you try to hide it pretty quickly and make sure no one else has probably seen it. Then there's those presents which maybe has your attention for about 10 minutes before you put it away somewhere and never see it again until maybe next Christmas and wonder who on earth sent you that. But then there's those special magic presents that stay with you. The presents that you just wanna open straight away and begin playing with and forget about everybody else in, in the room with you. I think Challenger is that sort of present that's asking you to open up the manual, get stuck in, be inspired, begin to explore and think about how it can benefit your work and how you can express the Challenger challenge in your own way. That's what it's, that's what it's there for. So this is about the time for action. If we really believe in young people and want to show our solidarity to young people, then we need to act for and with young people to enable them to achieve their best. And the challenge is very much enables us to do that. I want to finish with a, another quote from the great French writer Albert Camus. Real generosity toward the future lies in giving all to the present. And I think what's special about Northside Partnership is that the Challenger Manual is its act of giving in terms of sharing its intellectual property in an accessible, inspirational way. And I urge everyone today to appreciate that gift from Northside Partnership, and most importantly, to try to put it into action in your own communities. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Colin. Uh, that's uh, pulling together that manual in, in, your, in your presentation is, is some, some job, so well done on that. Uh, thanks to you and the, and the Northside people who contributed to, to that. It, it's a wonderful, and it, it, this idea of the Christmas present, the manual living a Christmas present is a lovely analogy. One of the things that really struck me was the idea that the manual could be a rocket be sent around the world for other other organizations to use. Lovely analogy because the work that's been done here, who would have thought that the work 20 year, 20 odd years ago that, that started in such humble beginnings now is at the stage where it could be used in other parts of the world. So I think that's, a, that's really wonderful. So thank you very much for putting that together and presenting in such a nice way. Now, our next speaker is somebody who has gone through the program and Karina Flintai is an ex-challenger, and she's going to talk about the challenger effect on the individual. So Karina, spotlight is on you. Hello, uh, thanks so much for asking me to talk today. I'm delighted, it's an honor. Um, so oh, what I'm gonna talk about is my experience, like Declan said, uh, but why would I chose to talk to you today? So 
Uh, I was one of the first children uh, to start a challenger program in 1995. Donald Boyle started the whole thing, um, rang up my mother and uh, says, where is Cassandra going, or Karina going to secondary school? Sorry, I'm talking about my own daughter. Uh, where is Karina going to <laughs> secondary school? Um, and uh, my um, what is like, oh, I don't know. And uh, I started from there. So he encouraged her to, to get me to join this challenger program and, and go from there. So it's fantastic. Uh, the whole thing was, I started in 95. Uh, in fifth, I was in fifth class and then I used the programme in the Challenger to go into Access programme in DCU uh, and then from there I'm now a director of a large e-commerce company called Empathy Marketing which many people would know the most famous site we have is pigsback.com. We have a lot of, a plaid of sites all over Ireland but that would be the most famous um, and now I'm doing a bit of a 360 on the Challenger so I used it myself and now I'm helping those uh, in it to start their careers by giving internships and mentoring students from the Challenger and the Access programme. So I I'll give you a little bit more background about how I started all this. So in St. Francis Senior National School, I was told uh, that only 1% of the children uh, from my school went on to third level education, actually. I found that a bit shocking, so did my mother. Uh, so um, I didn't know anything about third level. I didn't have any family in it. Uh, my mother, nobody in our community, your neighbours, nobody went to third level. Uh, the only idea of college I had was from the movies. So I'd see things where people would say, oh, you know, their daddy would bring them to Harvard or Yale and show them around these campuses. And they'd say, oh, my daddy wants me to go to Yale, but my mother wants me to go to Harvard. Oh, such a tough decision. And I'd be like, here's God, that's their, that's the only problem they have in life. They're having a good life, you know? And I thought, even from American movies, this is how warped our view is of media and everything. Uh, I thought it was like a hundred, a grand to go because people would be talking about in American movies, oh, I have to start saving as they're a baby for their college funds, you know? And the fact that, in Ireland is very different you know so this is the whole point of the challenger they gave us this education that that's not the way it is so they were with my surrogate parents like you know uh, so they brought me around DCU uh, UCD all hollows as a young child in fifth class and sixth class when I didn't know anything about financial constraints, constraints or how much college was or anything I was like oh my goodness this is like the dream it's amazing it's like a little city of learning uh, and I fell in love with the library and everything. I was only like 10 and 11. And I was like, I really want to go here. Like, and they really encouraged it and had such passion for it. And they helped my mother in terms of what secondary school to go to that had this program. So went on to secondary school and there they helped me with grinds, which was brilliant. I loved the teachers. They were like the best teachers they got. And I said, geez, if, they'd had, if I had them teachers the whole time in school, I would have got A's and everything because they were such a different approach to learning. So they really, really went and found the best grinds teachers. I excelled in my subjects then because I got my grinds. They gave me scholarships for the Gael Talks which, and a love of Irish language came out of that as well. So I was delighted with that. Um, and then uh, I can see now you have the presentation and public speaking kind of skills, um, which is fantastic because that's needed in all aspects of college, everything like that. So I am so happy to see that on it. I know it wasn't there when I was there, but uh, this is all the things that you keep adding to the course just makes it better and better for the students from, from the areas that I'm from. Um, the other effect on the Challenger programme, which was really good, is on my mother uh, and family as a whole. So when my mother started to get these courses, like the steps that Jeanette was talking about, um, how to encourage me in my education, what grants are available, what scholarships are available, all the resources that are available. My mother was like, I should go back to school. I should go back to education. Like my father was working a work minimum wage job, you know, working class job. My mother was working in a factory and she's like, no, I have to invest in myself. So she went on to do her junior and a leave insert. Uh, then she, we went on to college together. She became a lab technician in DIT. And that investment in herself and her education, I seen firsthand how the finances in the house just changed. Mortgage car was paid, no problems with bills or week to week. And I was like, so if that's the way life would be if I invest in myself and my education, that's my goal. So that my mother was a big inspiration as well in that way. So um, then now at the, the moment I went on to do, sorry, multimedia in DCU, that was my course, uh, through the Access programme, which was fantastic. They gave me so much finance because me and my mum were in college at the same time, so I really had no money. Um, so that was uh, brilliant. I worked as hard as I possibly could because I knew I'd never get a second chance at this. This is my only chance. I, nobody's going to pay for me to do a second or third time. So I got my one one in my course great on my CV, got my job straight away, so happy I got employed like a month after I graduated. Uh, then fast forward now, I'm the, the director in the company. I got a bit of clout from my CEO because I worked my way up and I said to him, 
Michael Dwyer at the time, he was saying, he was like, we'd have to get interns in. And I said, no, I says, you are always getting interns for that, your, your friends, daughters and sons and people from the same backgrounds. I'm not having that. I says, I know people that would die for this kind of opportunity. So worked with the access program on these uh, access to the workplace, which Cathy will talk about a bit later. But I work with that at the moment and give children from Challenger and the access program uh, internships in my job. So to get a bit of a, a step into an office environment, because I never worked in an office room. Nobody in my family did. I had no like friends of friends that I could ask for a job or anything like so. And that's a lot as well in, in companies that's in the corporate world. Usually it's who you know and stuff. So this is a really good, this was really good um, that I was delighted to be involved in. And I'm also involved in the Educational Trust in DCU and we give donations for that as well to help with other aspects of, 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 of access like um, people's rents and things like that. Uh, so yeah, Cathy will talk a bit more of the intro, intro programme that we're involved in. So I'll stop for there for now. So it was an honour talking to you. Thanks so much. And I'll hand back to Declan. Oh my goodness, Karina. I've written down here, I wish I could bottle you. <laughs> I've tried to get everything in as, as little time as possible. So I'd love it if anybody had any questions, you could ask me or call me or talk to me or email I'm me to give you more. <laughs> I really think that was, it's, it's a living example of the impact of this programme. But I think that the other big thing that Jeanette also referred to earlier on, and that you certainly alluded to very strongly, is the impact on your family that your, mm -hmm. your mother and so on got involved, which was wonderful. And the second thing you mentioned that Jeanette also stressed that the programme continually evolves. And you mentioned about the introduction now of public speaking. So mm -hmm. it's lovely to see those tie-ins from the various speakers. So Karina, what an example of the programme. So thank you very, very much and continued success in your programme. Uh, in, in your in your career, I should say. And you can I can see the, the value that you're adding to your company now, fantastic. Now, we're going to take a little step back now to see, to talk about the effect on a school. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Derry Amphlett, the principal of the school, uh, uh, Mary Macklett in Darndale. So Derry, over to you. Very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today and a great honour, I have to say. Um, I suppose, just to uh, give a little perspective, I've, I've worked in this school more, more than 40 years now. So I was here at the beginning of the Janitor Programme. I experienced the programme as a classroom teacher, then as a homeschool liaison teacher, and now as principal of the school. It's one of the things that I would be most passionate about. I would always encourage our children and their parents to get involved in the Challenger programme. It's a huge opportunity, particularly for children and their families from our area. When the programme was being established by Donald Boyle and Noel Kelly, I remember it well, and they looked at several programmes in various places which encouraged children to aim high and aim towards third level. And when they considered those programmes, they looked at what would be the one thing maybe that's missing in them. And the one thing they came up with really was the involvement of parents, and that's the crucial one. When the support is at home, then the child has every opportunity to progress. I have experienced children who have no end of ability, absolutely no end of ability. But unless the support is at home, unfortunately, the ability is often not enough to carry them through. That's the real value of the Challenger programme. From the very beginning, parents were crucial to the programme. Many parents would have said to me that they want their child to go to college. Unfortunately, because, as Karina said, because very few people in their family or even in their circle have been to college, they very often are not aware of what's required to get there. And the Challenger program steps in and shows people what is required to get there. And parents love that, that they now know what is required and they can offer far greater support to their child on their journey through second level school and hopefully beyond it. Uh, the activities, we would be most familiar with the six class activities really. They are tremendous. And the big value I think is 
building confidence in children. And we can see it. The experience of interacting with children from other schools that they would normally not have met maybe. The experience of the public speaking and the various other activities. The public speaking is a great one. And that really stands to them in second level now because of the emphasis on CBAs at junior site level. It's a huge advantage to them that they have the experience of public speaking. Things like that bring on the confidence of children at a tremendous rate. We see it from the beginning of the Challenger program towards the end of sixth class, the children who are involved, you can actually see their confidence growing, the belief in their own abilities growing. And it's great to see. Uh, it did strike me that we are, as all the schools in Dublin 17 are, part of the DESH Band 1 program. The DESH program is a Department of Education initiative um, aimed towards disadvantaged areas. And DESH stands for Delivering Equality in Schools. And the Challenger program fits that bill exactly. Because the activities that they do, the supports that they get, are aimed at providing equality for our children with children maybe in other areas who take these kind of activities for granted. That these, would these kinds of things would happen normally and naturally for children in many other areas, whereas in our area, they tend not to. So Challenger steps in there and as the famous phrase over across the water at the moment is, it tries to level up, to bring our children to a level where any child would be at the stage of life that they're at in their educational journey. Um, Jeanette mentioned the particular family um, where four children were in the Challenger program. One of them is a teacher in our school now. Oh, fantastic. fantastic teacher. And I have to say, the reason why, in my view, those children all excelled at everything they did was really their mom. I would have had lots of discussions with their mom and she wanted the very best for her children and was very anxious to participate and support them as best she could. She now, by the way, is an SNA in a local school as well. Um, so she was the driving force. And if ever there was an example of the importance of the parent being involved. She is the absolute ultimate, probably like Karina's mom, I think, um, very similar. She just wanted the very best for her children. Um, it also occurred to me that there is at the moment an initiative, Paul Rogers will be very aware of this and Paul Hayes, um, from DCU where there are local hubs which are aimed really at trying to, in the first instance, increase the number of children from our area who might seriously consider primary school teaching as a career. But also if, you know, children wanted to go to some other course at third level, you know, that, that wouldn't rule them out either, but it was designed as a, um, an, an initiative to encourage children to you know, get involved in primary school teaching because it's a huge advantage to have somebody from the local area who's actually working as a primary school teacher. It's a tremendous example to the children that that teacher is working with. Um, so it's, and Paul Hayes has actually mentioned this at some of our meetings, it was, it's a something that could actually naturally tie in with the Challenger program. You know, it's not a replacement for it and you know, the, the one is not exactly the same as the other, but there will be a natural linkage there. And I think that that will be very exciting. Um, so that I think we could forge very strong links there and that, you know, the, the ultimate aim for all of us would be very similar. So I just want to wish everybody involved in Challenger, I sat in the committee myself as a homeschool liaison teacher for a number of years, and I have to pay tremendous tribute to the work Jeanette does Actually, when Jeanette came on board as a coordinator of the project, that really drove it on. So it was tremendous to have somebody who was dedicated to the implementation of the program because it was very difficult sitting as a committee who had obviously other jobs to do to actually implement the program. So it was a huge step forward when we got a coordinator, particularly someone of the caliber of Jeanette. So look, I just want to say well done to everybody involved in the manual. I think it's a great idea. 
and it's something we'd love to see rolled out into other areas. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I think what a wonderful example of um, the, the impact of the programme from the cold face, so to speak, and namely in a primary school. And as somebody who's, as you said, been a classroom teacher, home liaison, and now principal, you've seen every aspect of it, and it really hits home. One thing that I pick up, I've been involved with many schools of uh, board of management, and when I started off 30 odd years ago, I remember a principal saying to me that the biggest impact on the child's attitude to education is the parent's attitude. And you, you've given some fantastic examples of that. So it's a really important aspect to, to, uh, to, uh, to stress. And uh, what I also love the point you made about the confidence of the children at coming out of school. And that's really very important also. And the last point you made about this thing of the primary school teaching as a career, that's I'm sure that will be taken up by, all, by, by people uh, further on the line. So Derry, thank you very, very much. Very, very interesting. So ladies and gentlemen, our last speaker today is at the end of the line, so to speak, and that is the impact of the Challenger programme at university level. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to you to, to Cathy McLaughlin from the DCU. Cathy. Good morning, everybody. Um, can you see my screen there? I'm just yes, indeed. Good. So I'm Cathy McLaughlin and I'm head of the DCU Access Service. <laughs> Many of you are very familiar with that um, picture there if you've driven down the Collins Avenue. Um, I think that those I, that sticks, I don't know what we called them as we come in the entrance, but they've become quite I iconic there in a very, very short space of time. And I just want to make one particular note. DCU is celebrating its 40th birthday this year. And I think it very much ties in with the Northside Partnership who celebrate their 40th birthday next year. So I think um, it's just to say these organisations have grown alongside each other. And I think both have thrived um, over their 40 years, making a massive difference to the communities that they live in. And I know the Challenger was set up in 1995, just as the DCU Access Service began to really get its feet we had started in 1990 as well. We were incorporated with the university, but we went beyond Ballymun and into the greater north side in 1995. So I think it's not a coincidence. I think we had some very foresighted people um, working in our locality who obviously were talking to each other at the time. So I think that's absolutely um, fabulous to see. Sorry, my slides ain't working quite well here. So yeah. Um, and just to say, I'm going to talk to you this morning here just a little bit about why do we have an access programme in a university. And I also really want to make that statement that university is for everyone. Um, universities thrive on diversity. Um, we don't want a homogeneous group of people. Um, academics, staff, students, they love different voices, different opinions, different accents, different colours. Diversity, it's what makes a university a great community. And I know one thing that I often hear from academics and which they really do appreciate is the local voice. It's the local students and the local opinions who often have a different perspective um, on law, teaching and, and courses to, then maybe you're a middle class student. And I think it's really important to have all those voices and all those opinions in the classroom. So why do we, why, is, why do we have an access programme? We're 30 years old, the DCU Access Programme was founded in 1990. Why? Why do we have a programme? We have a programme because in Ireland, 64% of secondary school children go on to third level education. But in certain socioeconomic groups, and if we're thinking here of sales assistants, factory workers, drivers, only 26% go on. One in three people in the Irish education in Ireland now hold a third level qualification. But in certain neighbourhoods in North Dublin, that drops to 8%. And I think Derry, as you, said in your speech earlier, all these young people have ability. They are, all young children are born with equal intelligence, equal ability. What changes is the life opportunities and the educational opportunities that those young people are given. And it's our role, I suppose, here as a group of people working in the North side at primary, secondary and third level to come together and make sure that those young people have all the opportunities and we provide a connection condominium right through their whole life, right through into third level education. Um, if you can see there, the areas in yellow, which would particularly, we're looking at parts of Darndale, Priorswood, and parts of Ballymun and Finglas, have less than 
based on the last census, had less than 8% of the population holding a third level qualification. If we compare that to areas, I often think if you head out the, Bal the gates in Ballymun, the Ballymun gates for DCU, you go left and you head down towards Glasnevin, Botanic Gardens, we're looking at, I suppose, very high levels of educational attainment. If we take a right and we head up towards Ballymun and maybe branch left or right then across into certain parts of that north side, that level of attainment really drops. But we know it's not because of the lack of ability of the young people. Somewhere along the line, we're letting those young people down. The system, the education system, you know, and I suppose this group of people here are working really, really hard to make sure that's not the case. So in DCU, we allocate 10% of all undergraduate places um, to students coming into the access service. So just to give you an idea, haven't had the final figures for this year, but we generally take in about 3,500 first year students into undergraduate degrees. That means I have a minimum of 350 places at reduced entry requirements into all programmes. So about 70% of new access students come in on reduced points. To give an example, if we have a student that's a course that's 400 points, we be, may be making an offer to a student who has achieved 350 points in the leaving certificate. So what we do is we take a holistic view of where the young person has come from. And we know that often because of challenges in their home life, the home environment, their family background or within the school system, they've been unable to achieve their best. And we know that when we bring them in, we will work our magic on them. And what we do know is that our, our access students excel and thrive in DCU. I am proud every single year to say that we outperform the general student population. More access students on graduation achieve higher honours degree than the general university population. And it's not a one-off, we've been doing it for about 15 years now. And everybody says to me, what do we do? And I say, we do nothing, it's the students who do it. You know, a lot of students who come in on leaving certificate have got the best grinds, the best education, they're maxed out. They've achieved their potential coming in. Our students haven't achieved their potential. They're only three quarters way there. And once they thrive, once we bring them into our environment. So I think an interesting figure is you were talking about how many students came from Challenger into DCU. I know that seven came in 2019. Haven't had time to go in and do the homework yet in 2020, because would you believe we're still actually taking students in? It's been a little bit of a different process this year. And yeah. I know that some of those seven students that came into us last year, they're studying teaching, nursing. We've already heard about a young man coming into engineering this year. I know they've went into history and geography, law, science. So I suppose what I'm saying is there is no limits. They can come, they can study anything and they can be anything they want to be. And I suppose referring back to what Karina was talking is about the cost. I think the myth, the universe, the, Media often talks about the cost of education and they, and they probably focus in on the cost of students living away from home. But what they don't tell us is that really the cost for a student to, the fees for a student to attend college like DCU is 3,043 students. The students we you target in Challenger and that we target in the Access Programme are eligible for the SUSE grant. That, that 3,000 fee is paid for them. What we actually ask a student to pay is 43 euros to come to DCU. And that 43 euros is for their enjoyment. That's the student union and the student life and clubs and societies. So they're actually paying 43 euros for whole years of entertainment within the university. All their teaching and that is free. And I think that's something that we really need to get out and get that message across to communities. Third level is affordable. And as Karina said, we're very fortunate in DCU because every single one of our access students, and I generally have about 1,200 students at any time in the university. We've 350 generally in first year. Every single one of those get a financial scholarship. We never lose a student through lack of money. And I want you to take that back and take that to students on the challenger. If they get to us in DCU, we will make sure they do not leave college because they do not have enough money. We will do everything we can to make sure that they succeed. Just to give you some very quick stats on this year. We've taken 330 students in on our access programme this year. 45% of those are from Dublin. Um, quite a significant number will be from the north side of Dublin, stretching out as far as swords. 
100% of them will get financial help from us. 68% got reduced point offer. So we reduced things. And 80% got one of their top three choices in their CAO. And I think that's really important. So that means that helps our retention because they're coming in to study what they want to do. So it's not, it's not a lower choice than the CAO. We really try and make sure they get what they want. And Karina made reference to this, and it's something I just want to bring up. We're, we're very aware of the importance for young people coming from communities of disadvantage, how important money is, and money is to their families. So we've come up with a new initiative last year called um, based around the team of Earn and Learn, and it's access to workplace. Tapping into what Karina was talking about, is that often young people from very disadvantaged backgrounds don't have the connections and the family connections. They've never had the opportunity to work in an office environment. So what we do is we organise an internship for them in the second year of their course, no matter what they're studying. It can be in arts, humanities, history, geography, we don't care. And we will organise them a summer internship and they get paid by the company to work. To pay, they get paid to work. We guarantee the minimum wage. Um, and so rather than taking the job in the local spa, we hopefully they're going to work in a company like Karina's or with a, 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 one of the big insurance or, or financial companies. And I think, again, and, and because DCU is so big on this, they also go for an internship in, thir in third year. So that by the time they graduate, they will have done two paid internships. So I just, I'm trying to get the message across is how affordable third level is. And we recognise the importance of work and work for, for young people from certain families and backgrounds. So again, getting that message home, it's not just all about study, we do have fun as well. And just finally, just there's a few stories here if you want to go onto a website and we talk about, you know, variety and background. Chloe is a young lady from uh, Kulak and she is in third year computer science. Um, she's just completed a internship on the programme I just mentioned with BT Ireland and she's already secured her internship for next summer where she goes out in next March and she's going to work for Fidelity Investments. So she's, you know, she's set up for this year and then we have obviously um, young people with disabilities and Kevin is uh, doing primary school teaching through Irish Sign Language. Sally is a local um, young student from the north side and he's studying engineering. So again, I just want, I'm getting that message across that young people can study anything when they come here to us with DCU. So thank you very much. And I hope you found that useful. If anybody has any questions for me, and I just say, Jeanette, we love when you bring the students on campus. It is one of the highlights for us. And it's something other staff comment to us. They love to see the enthusiasm and the joy, and they know we're getting in there early and we're getting the students to see the excitement and the vibrancy of the campus. And the one thing they always say to us is, it's not like school it doesn't look like school at all. So keep up the good work, everybody in the Northside Partnership and Jeanette. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cathy. A wonderful insight uh, to the, the end result of the, I suppose, the Challenger programme. A couple of things. One thing that struck me, you said, was university is for everyone. I think that's a wonderful mm -hmm. objective. And the, the other thing that struck me was that how the access uh, students are performing so well at third level. And the last one, which is a wonderful development, I think, from DCU, is the Earn and Learn uh, programme to support students. So thank you very much indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of our, our webinar. A webinar which has been, I think, has been a fantastic event. Um, we had some great speakers. Uh, we had Nessa Vaughan, a chair of the Northside Partnership, who spoke, gave background. We had Minister O'Brien, who formally launched it, and it's very important to have the support of the state in this program. Uh, Jeanette uh, Burns, Burns came across with that wonderful, passionate uh, display uh, about the, the program itself. Uh, Colin Faulkner gave a, a lovely presentation of the manual and how this manual could roll out to many other parts of the country and indeed the world. And then, of course, we had Karina, which was the living proof of the benefits of the programme. And the principal from the, the German Amphlet spoke about the impact of, from, his, from his point of view of primary school uh, students. And lastly, of course, we had Cathy from DCU talking about how well access students do well in that university. I want to thank on behalf of Northside Partnership, thank you all to all the speakers. I want to thank all the, the people who have who, who've signed up and attended the webinar. 
thank you for all the messages of goodwill. But they're, they're very much appreciated. And lastly, a big, big thank you to the people who organised the event from Northside Partnership. I won't mention names because no doubt I leave somebody out. But I think what it is, it's an example of the, the commitment and the professionalism of the organisation to be able to put together this type of event. So um, without further ado, I'm going to formally close the, the, the event and I want to wish all the people in Northside Partnership and for most particularly for the young students coming through the programme, uh, the best of luck in, in the future. So thank you all very much, uh, and hopefully we will meet each other soon again at another event. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye now.